Welcome to EDNA Tech. In the previous video, we have done an interface of LED with the Arduino Uno, where we wrote a output through the registers with the help of the information that are available in data sheets. In this video, we are going to see how to get the input from the external devices. You can also use any of the external devices. I am going to explain with the help of a switch or a button. So let us see how to interface a push button with Arduino Uno. I am going to use port C. In the previous video, I had an example with the help of port D. In this video, I am going to use port C. So let's start our simulation. Before that, we need a push button which is available in the component list. So we have a push button on the Arduino. How to connect this push button with the Arduino? For that, I read some op article which is very useful. It has a two different connections can be made with the push button. Either a pull up mode or pull down mode. You can use any of these two type for your connection. In the pull up mode, the microcontroller pin is connected to 5 volt with the help of resistors. Where the switch is connected to the ground, the other side of the switch is connected to ground. So what actually happens in the pull up mode means when the switch is open, that means it is a open circuit. So this 5 volt will be seen here in the microcontroller pin. When the switch is closed, that means this 5 volt will be grounded. So this 5 volt flows through this wire resistor and it will be flow to ground. So 0 volt will be seen at microcontroller. So they say this type of connection as pull up mode because basically you are giving a 5 volt to the microcontroller pin. If nothing happens that 5 volt will be seen in microcontroller. So they say this connection as pull up mode. The pull down mode is nothing but we are basically grounding the microcontroller pin. That means we are connecting the ground pin with the microcontroller pin. The other side is 5 volt. Here you can see when the switch is open that means the 5 volt cannot be seen here. So the 0 volt will be seen in the microcontroller pin. When the switch is closed this 5 volt flows through the switch and it is act as a short circuit when the button is closed. So this flow 5 volt flows through this switch and when it reaches here the microcontroller pin has a 5 volt. That means it reach the value of 1, digital 1. Digital 1 is nothing but a 5 volt. So when the switch is open, it reads 0 volt and the switch is closed, it reads 5 volt. So this is a pull down mode. And you can use any of these two modes for your connection. I am going to use a pull down mode which is a active I. So we can move to our simulation where we can connect our device the 5 volt should be connected in the one side of the push button. The other side should be grounded with the help of resistor. So I am going to take a resistor and the other side of the resistor should be connected with a ground. Here you can connect your microcontroller pin. I am going to use A naught which is a PC naught. That means it is a first pin of port C. You can use any of these six pins because these are all port C pins and these are all port B pins and no this is port D pins and this is port B pins. You can also use any of these ports. So first we need to initialize our ports which ports we are going to use and we are going to use it as a input or output. First we need a port initialization so I am going to write as port initialization as my function name okay. 
volatile what is the use of volatile means if you not used volatile it will optimize some sort of lines let me example take a <coughs> code that contains volatile i and a for loop for loop of i equal to 0 i less than yeah, some values i plus plus and i write this line then the volatile i will not optimize this for loop if sorry we should use a data type before variable so if i use a volatile int i means it will not optimize this line if i didn't use this volatile means only a int i means it will optimize this line so we should use the volatile for our because we know what is the use of this line but the compiler doesn't know it will be useful it will think it as it is not needed it is like a command so we should use a volatile in front of a variable so I am going to use a volatile care for detailed explanation the next video I can explain with it a example here you can just write a volatile care I am why I am using care is my input registers also a 8 bit because it is 8 bit I am sufficient with care if the bits exceeds 8 bit or it goes behind 8 bit you can all use a particular data type that available for particular bits if the bits is 16 32 or 64 you can use any of the int like long short you can use any of those data type I am going to name a variable as port C direction because the direction register shows whether you are using the pin as input or output I am going using pointer variable because pointer variable is easy to introduce or change a address because if you didn't use a pointer variable then the compiler itself allocates a particular address where the data is stored but we need a specific address where the data should be stored so I am using a pointer variable to store a data in particular address so I am going to write the address of the port C which will be here in the data sheet the port C data direction register as a address of 0x27 you can use this address where you can write your data what data should be written means if the pin is used as a input then you should make that value as zero if the pin is used as a output then you should write that pin as a one because in I am going to use dd c naught that means it is a a naught pin and I am going to write a zero here that means this pin act as a input if I write a one here then the a naught pin this a naught pin will act as a output pin depending upon the value on the direction register it can be used either as a input or output pin so I am going to make all my port C pins as input so I am going to write 0x00 if you want to make any of the particular pin as output then you can use one value in the particular registers value so next our aim is to write a function to get the input from the registers so I am going to name it as input port input So we need a volatile K 
care the pointer variable port C input here we are going to read a value that is stored in a particular registers address so the address of the port C input is you can verify it in the data sheet that is 0x26 the port C input pin address is 0x26 if you are going to use the port D then it has a separate register address value if you are going to use the port D means it has a 0x29 input pin address if you are going to use B it has also a separate value so verify a data sheet for a value that needed for your program I am going to use a port C so I am writing 0x26 to read the data I am going to introduce a variable called input data as my variable where the data from the register is stored so I am going to move my data which is available in the register address 0x26 to a particular variable named input data so before that we should add a data type to this variable I am going to use it as a character you can use any other data type but it is only 8 bit so I am going to use character so I am going to move my data that is 0x26 the value that is stored in the particular address like 0x26 is moved to input data next we need to return the input data whenever this function is called if the function is called in in the intermediate then it should return the value that stored in that register before that if you are going to return any of the data we should use a particular data type because if you are not returning anything the void is enough because void is nothing but a null it did it doesn't return any value here you can see the port initialization that uh, does that not doesn't return data to any of those functions so this particular function returns a data to external lines because whenever you call this function it will return a particular data so we are using a care if doesn't return data means you can use void so we are going into a main function where you can write mm, first we should initialize our port so I am going to call my function which is named as port initialization so you can call this function and it will initialize your ports port C that is input or output all will be done when you call this function the next thing is to see the data that is stored in the variable so I am going to name it as a button 1 as my variable so I am going to check what is the value when my button is pressed so I am going to call my function named input port input so whenever I call my function port input it will return my data that means the value that stored in the register to this variable called button 1 so here you cannot see what's the value that is stored in button 1 you cannot view the naked eye so we need a particular thing like in a C program if you are writing a printer function it will show your value in the console window so here we have a console window like a thing that is called serial monitor you can use this serial monitor to view your outputs so I am going to use a serial library I am only using this library because it is very useful 
while you debugging your big programs print erlang mm, shall i name it as a button one value is i am going to write a separate lines because i want to know what whenever this function is called i should know it in a separate line so i am writing it as a print ln print ln is thing but a new line if you doesn't write ln that means you are writing in a same line so i am going to use print ln which is have a separate lines while you are writing so if you run this program it will show some values which is not correct i think so because we have to have a output of zero because no when the button is not pressed the value must be zero so one thing that we can do is we should read a data that what the pin that was connected only because if you doesn't write 0x01 function like and function is 0x01 means you are going to read all these lines because if you also if the pin a2 is connected to some other device you didn't know but it will have a data that will be stored in a input register so it will have a like a interference in here signal like a signal as some noise likewise here the data will be interfered from some other device so for negotiating that i am introducing a and function with 0x01 why this 0x01 means i am precisely looking only on a not pin and i am going to negotiate all these pins so now we can see what the value that will come it shows a value like b so we also don't know what's the value because we are written it in a character means if these values if it comes or in a numerical the numerical is converted into every numerical value as a certain ascii value you can find it in a ascii table like we are getting a b maybe they may have a 98 like value or x value of 0x62 that it gets a value of 0x62 so our value is wrong so we need to check the help of you can use a dec that means it will show you the value in a decimal it also shows b which it shows some garbage value because you didn't initialize it with a value if you didn't initialize with a value then it the particular variable has some other value stored in it you want to first clean that variable with the help of a zero now it should show zero i think so let us try whether it shows zero it show it also shows some other value so we are going to use a while loop because while loop can be used wisely they you ch can check your value when the button is pressed so i am going to write a while loop which can check our button so before this while loop i am going to write this so let us see whether our function works correctly or not so it waiting for our it was in the while loop it is infinite because the button value is zero so it is checking for a change in that value so when we press the switch the value of button 1 will be changed either it may be a value of 1 4 2 any of the random values but while changing this will terminate the while loop and it will print our button value so let us press our switch so
so while pressing our switch it shows as B but we should get a value of 1 we have done some mistake which will be seen here the value should be 1 let us me check my code where I done a mistake I forgot to mention one thing if you are using a serial library you should set its baud rate which is a main thing to get your correct output so I am going to set my baud rate as 9600 so if you are using a serial library like a serial.println serial .bin, many functions are available in serial library if you are using any of those particular functions you should give that baud rate above your functions so if it doesn't give that function it will not communicate with your input device likewise your Arduino and your external device has to have a same baud rate to communicate so let us see whether it comes a correct out or put or maybe a wrong we press the switch it should get one yeah here you can see we are getting a value of one if I connect this pin with a one then what will be the value so I am not getting any of the values because I am looking only on one so if I multiply 0x 01 that means if you are, I am going to un my port input function with 0x 01 I am only looking at a naught and this will make all other pins are 0 so if you want to make this pin to communicate so we should make it as 0x 2 so now we can get a value of 2 run the simulation if I press the switch you can get a button value of 2 let me execute it with here two buttons you can feel the difference what is the use of this un function so I'm going to connect my another button so let me move this up so one five volt should be connected here and uh, I need a resistor so I want to ground my resistor So I am connected a two buttons. So this button is connected with A naught, and this button is connected with A one. Let me press a value of. So I am going to check for these two pins. So I am going to write it as zero x zero three. That means. Let me explain it here with the help of sketch. Uh, the board. So if the value is 0, 0, 0, this is a 4 bit, another 4 bit makes it as 8 bit. So this has a equivalent of 0, x, 0, 0 in x. If I write a 3, that means 2. So this is a hexadecimal equivalent of 0x03. So if I write 3 means I am looking at 2 pins. If I write only 2, I am particularly looking at only 1 pin. 
so i am making all other pins as zero so you these pins will become zero and will get the output of zero so if you are going to write a pin which you are going to check make it as a one and multi and with those function so you can see uh, first i write an one that means i am looking only at a not pin if you are going to see only a one pin then you should write zero x zero zero x zero two if you are looking both a not and a one then you should write zero x zero three that means these two values represents the value that is a not and a one if you are going to look at a two means you should also make this as one so then the value will become four plus two plus one is seven so zero x zero seven looks the value that means it makes three pins enable so i'm going to look at this three pins so here you can see i am running uh, my simulation when i press this button it should get a value of one so next we can check if i press this button it should get a value of two here you can see when i press this button it gets a value of two if i press this button it gets a value of one to make it as a continuous function you should use here another while loop which will run continuously so i'm going to make a while one here you can see when i press the button it shows button value 2 if i press this button it shows button 1 button 2 button 1 button 2 so you can use this function it shows this much of value at one press means it needs a delay function because it will perform at a 0 0.92 milliseconds or microseconds in the speed so it is very fast to consider to us so uh, we can make a delay function here to see a particular value at a particular time so I, when i press this switch wait here you can see when i press the button one it shows a number of times so to reduce a number of times you should introduce a delay in between these functions so as I showed in a previous video, you should write a software delay function and you can use it here and you can perform a button one or button two. You can use any number of buttons. You can also use six buttons and a six LEDs and also eight buttons and eight LEDs. The next video, we are going to use eight LEDs and eight buttons and you can perform any of the functions with these eight LEDs and eight buttons. With the help of these programs you can learn how the input and output basically functions and basically what happening inside these functions you can learn and next on other video we are going to introduce a new device called a sound segment you can learn through sound segment and we can move on with that sound segment and go on so see you in the next video and how to interface 8 LEDs and 8, eight LEDs and 8 buttons. And that's it for your video. Thank you.